three, two, one. Hey, welcome back. Dan Robinson here. I've got another camera here for you. In this little yellow Merce, I've got what's called the Minolta Weathermatic Dual 35. So what this is is actually a camera that was released in 1987, obviously by Minolta. Being the Weathermatic, it's completely waterproof, so it is a true underwater camera. There was also a 110 film format Weathermatic. It looked just like this, but it was just uh, smaller and flatter, but it had the same color scheme. And so when I saw this one actually at Burlington Camera, this is another one that they lent me. When I saw this thing on the shelf, I was like, what is that? Because I just thought, uh, like I said, it came out in 1987 and I was born in 87. So I can definitely relate, I guess, as a baby. It's just this cool, very uh, blocky, vibrant yellow camera. So just a few features with it. Um, it's just a basic on-off switch right here. And then you've got the little window here that just shows you how many shots you've taken. And then here is your shutter release. So if I just... <laughs> so what this little button does here is switch you between a 35 millimeter focal length at an f-stop of 3.5 and a 50 millimeter focal length at an f-stop of 5.6. So while it looks just like a basic point and shoot, which it is, um, at least you get those two focal lengths that you switch between. So instead of being able to zoom in and out along varying focal lengths, you just have those two. So I'll kind of show you what that does, and you can hear it. So like I said, this is completely weather sealed. Um, it does have actually a nice grip on it. It's a pretty big camera for uh, an old point and shoot. Um, so I guess if you're using it underwater, uh, you can get a good grip on it. Now what this thing actually does is it allows you to frame up your shot uh, to a degree without being able to look into the viewfinder if you have goggles on or something. Um, so then you can just look through this. And it kind of frames up your shot um, so you don't have to be right up against it. You can just kind of hold it back. So it actually uses an infrared sensor to detect the distance of objects, but only above water. So underwater, it actually has this feature here. It says underwater close-up. So it's actually a focus lock button. The minimum distance to focus is two and a half feet. Uh, to infinity is the maximum. Open it up to put film in here. There's a little trigger there. That's what the inside looks like. And uh, actually the battery compartment's right on the bottom here. And as you loosen it, it will just pop open and you can tell that there's some pressure on it because it's weather sealed as well to keep water from getting in the battery compartment. It takes four AAA batteries, which is really nice and they're easy to get and fairly inexpensive. So now the interesting thing with this camera is because it's waterproof, I wanted to be able to test it out in a water setting. Um, so I had to try and get creative in order to get a good shot underwater. Obviously at home that didn't really work out, so we went up to um, the family cottage for a week and I just kind of played around with it. So the shots that you're going to see at the end of this are mostly of my family and the lake and things like that. So I didn't go out and really do a big photo shoot, but at least it's a little sample that you can see kind of what it's capable of. Now I'm going to warn you in advance, uh, the underwater shots are extremely limited because I learned very quickly that uh, in a very shallow lake, obviously any silt or sand or muck that gets stirred up, the picture is completely useless. So I had several pictures that were just this foggy mess. So I'll show you at least one or two that kind of show what it looks like underwater. Um, yeah, in my experience it wasn't great. I've seen pictures online of people using these underwater and they actually did a really good job. They are out in the ocean or in a pool or something like that. And I think that's where this would really shine. And so now we're actually gonna cut to a quick clip of me up at the cottage, uh, loading it up with a roll of film so you can see how that happens. And then we'll switch over and you can see how the pictures turned out.
Now, do I think you should get one of these? This is a very niche market camera because it has to kind of check off a whole bunch of boxes. So yeah, it's the kind of the 35 millimeter, yeah, I wanna get into that. Yeah, I want it to be waterproof so I can try some cool underwater in the pool or in the ocean or whatever shots. Yeah, then this is definitely for you. Does it take really, really good shots? Um, it didn't really have a super sharp focus or anything. It was just okay. Fun camera, easy to use, waterproof. Definitely a conversation starter because people will be going, what is that? Um, so just keep all that in mind if you're trying to get back into film and you want to do some uh, underwater shots. Price-wise, depending on condition and quality, um, it's pretty reasonable. I think you can find them as low as 30 or 40 bucks. Um, anything under 100 bucks, I think, is pretty good. I think this one, because it's in such good shape and has everything in the bag, the manuals, um, the sport viewfinder on top, I think this one's about 60 bucks. So um, I think anywhere around that price for something like this is pretty good. Keep that all in mind when you're looking for a camera, if you're getting back into it. And uh, so let's look at some pics.